Hey guys, welcome to another English commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the Relay War, and I have no idea how it's going to work. We'll have to see as the game goes. On one side, we're going to have Reach, Luxury, and Sea, and on the opposite side, we're going to have Free, Lita, and Great. And I don't know if it's a best of three, or if they're going to switch in and out of chairs, or how that's exactly going to work. C on the left-hand corner there, as you can see, with Luxury and C. C, of course, looking manly as ever. Right-hand corner. Across from them, we have Great, Lita, and Free. A little bit more the... Well, not youngins, but definitely the less experienced great, one of the newcomers. C was known as the terrible infant for a while, but he's kind of kind of moved in. Luxury, one of the long staples, and of course Reach, the old great. Free, I would say, is the most experienced on the opposite side, but he's still more of a newcomer. So pretty good all-star lineup on both sides. Team Challenge versus Team Passion, by the way, which really doesn't matter. It's just to see some fun games, and I have no idea how I'm going to tell the colors. Looks like there's also a timer. Uh, pumping down from six minutes. I have no idea what that means either. I think that might be the switch indicator. Upper left hand corner, let's see who they switch to on the cameras. I'm assuming that is going to be C, Reach, and Luxury. And it's ironic because that's Free's main race. Bottom right hand corner, looks like as Terran, we're going to have Free, Lita, and Great. Also ironic because that's C's main race. So I'm not sure if they're telling each other their race right off the bat or what's going on. On Andromeda should be a pretty macro-heavy map, so it should be pretty uh, a pretty long game. I guess they intentionally chose Andromeda because it would result in a longer game. Normally I would say, oh yeah, it's your favor one race or favor the other race, but it's completely out of the window when you're dealing with guys that never play these races anyway, so we'll see how it works out. And it looks like they're, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what they're pointing out on screen either, so I'm just going to have to wing this one by the, the seat of my pants. Pretty good near 10k commentary to do. The completely unfamiliar territory commentary. Looks like the probe scout scouting after nine wants to make sure he gets a good scout in the base before that front door seal headed to the bottom left hand corner. And it doesn't look like a front door seal is happening either way, so looks like Free is going to try to use his micro to push out of the situation either way and allow a little bit of crying there. And it'll allow a little bit uh, better. <laughs> See, having trouble with that probe scout, and it'll allow for better, uh, better ac economic pressure overall, also better troop movement uh, through the mid game. I'm not sure about the e economy. I'm just kind of throwing that out there at this point. Really fast child's play charity. If you go to broodwar.chipin.com, you will be able to find interesting placement for that bunker. Obviously, zealots aren't going to really be able to pressure there because it's caddy corner, and it looks like Savior versus Flash is up next. That's going to be the epic match. Going to do that immediately after this. That's going to be a really fun matchup. Kind of an odd combination to put it up against each other. I don't know that they really have the rivalry or epic clashes that Savior and Bisu do, but I guess Bisu's new rival's Jadong, so you got to have that towards the end. But I think Bisu Flash actually would have been a really fun match to have in there as well, moving down from three minutes already. Wow. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what happens when the timer runs out. And it looks like a 14, I'm sorry, 12 Nexus before Gateway, and a cr oh, cross corner scout, and sees like, wow. How unlucky can you get? Going caddy corner, finding nothing. So completely in the dark. Now it looks like, at the very least, he's going to be scouting. The, the scout's going to be cross corner. And now he's like, oh, okay, finally saw it. So it looks like Free's going to be able to scout uh, as best as he could from, from uh, yeah, from the situation. It could have been worse. He could have spawned right next to him and then gone the wrong clockwise direction. Who knows? This is just going to be hilarious and weird. I can tell already. They already look like they're up to mischief. Um, so... I really like the 12 Nexus on this map in particular, just because there's such a large distance in between the two spawns, you can play defensively and really get away with it, and that probe scout easily able to just wander through. Looks like only a single SCV on gas, so we're probably going to see a fast expansion, and it looks like, yeah, that first gateway coming online. Gonna have to instill that SCV scout, okay, finally that SCV scout coming in, and a little bit of frustration there probably after seeing that Nexus as well, oh, crap, let's see what he decides to do. He's really just going to have to play economic catch-up either way because he didn't have the 3 SCV on gas to really push pressure. One of the things that we've seen Terran do recently is throw at that Vulture and see if he decides to do that. Uh, but And it's a little easier to do that on this map because you because of the turnaround with Siege or the turnaround with Mines doesn't take quite as long. Uh, but at the same time, you can it's much e this right here, much easier to seal the front door for a Protoss player against that Vulture Harass. So unlike the prior match I did, which was actually later in the set, um, should be a little bit more difficult in that Probe Scout uh, backing out right here. And it looks like 30 seconds left. Let's see if they do, in fact, switch chairs. Looks like Freeze putting up that expansion on the ground right now. Again, go to Child's Play and donate right now. I am planning to do Idra versus Nyokin. And I'm not sure if they're going to be able to switch races all of a sudden or, or how that's exactly going to work. Or if they're just going to pause and be like, this person won. Are they pausing? Okay. 
Okay, no, they're s just switching chairs. I don't see a pause in effect, and it looks like they do just hop right in, in and out of the chair. And that could get really hilarious in the middle of a gigantic micro fight. And a complete front door block off to make sure those vultures can't really do anything. Pylon already in the way, so some dragoons alongside that will uh, definitely be advantageous. It looks like no vulture, actually, sorry, one vulture able to get up there right now. I hate that when they switch the map out. I'm like, wait, okay, there's the machine shop. The vulture should be out. Where's the vulture? So the vulture's actually going to have to be turned around, and it looks like already a safe economic position. And this is kind of the difficult position, I feel like, for Terran, because it's decision-making time, and it's up to them to kind of do one way or the other. Is just, and it looks like, uh, what uh, who's up? Lita? It looks like what Lita's going to do is he's going to play a little bit more defensively, put the bunker up, and probably take an additional inside expansion of the mineral only. But, yeah, that's the thing, is, is you don't know whether you need to defend your base or whether you should go for an attack and it's kind of it's really on the Terran to do something and I feel like they kind of end up in the dark because Protoss can do anything they can go in for a large attack otherwise um, and it looks like a little bit of panic in, it, in his eyes okay they're the vulture getting a couple hits and it looks like those dragoons are gonna have to back out are you gonna play a longer economic game as a Terran player Ooh, losing that vulture and two there should be a second tank out momentarily siege tech should be up as well so uh, maybe what I said earlier and there are SEVs there to provide the repair support but Luxury playing a bit defensively, used to being Zerg and not used to kind of just uh, pushing in. I don't think those Dragoons are in range to take a hit, so it looks like he was able to back up, not being too suicidal here with just the, the small numbers and long reinforcement point. But he is going to be able to get a pretty good position. That's pretty heavy SCV saturation on that secondary already, though. So a lot of SCVs out in the field. Looks like he already was putting down his third. And now let's see what uh, team, I, I'm not sure which team is which, actually, what, what team Passion or Team Challenge is going to do. Basically, the other team, aside from Lita. Let's see what Luxury is up to. Looks like Luxury opening his front door, which might be a mistake, because he's, he's putting down a Nexus as well. He doesn't have a lot of Dragoons already. He doesn't have Observers to really deal with Vultures that could be flooding out in the field momentarily. And we see that Engineering being, being produced just to play a little bit safe, just in case some Dark Templar or some turrets were heading up in the field. Both players going for the longer economic game, which is, I think, what everyone wanted to see. I feel like they're almost... Uh, not forced to, but they're definitely... Um, it's kind of the smarter maneuver on Andromeda, just because it is such a long map. The reinforcements points uh, so far behind, and it looks like in kind of this exchange, uh, even though there's going to be f more probes than SCVs, the economic swing is going to go back towards uh, the opposite team of C, who's on the keyboard again, Lita. <laughs> it's going to be hard to keep track of. So uh, Lita taking it, and looks like we are going to see either... Well, I can't imagine we're going to see Speed Zell. Probably going to see Dark Templar. When in doubt, Spam K. Going to pick up the Dark uh, to Templar tech. Very powerful with the shuttles up on that ridge, especially if you can get that northern position. The question is, is can you get there before the Terran just moves out and seals you in? The slow pushes on this map are absolutely devastating because you've got that entire buildable middle with that nice economy. You can go, you can seal your Protoss opponent in, so Protoss really has to be on guard. And that's actually where if you produced a couple Dark Templar in the mix, it would be nice because you can just kind of force back um, that map control. Even with Comsat, it's uh, difficult to work with, and it looks like expecting some Vulture Drops or something like that. He's got some Dragoons over that northern edge. It looks like he's also putting down another Nexus to try to go up one Nexus uh, over the opposite team. So Luxury putting down a Nexus at the 9 o'clock. He looks very uncomfortable playing Protoss here. Um, and it looks like he is, in fact, oh, going straight to Arbiters. So going to go straight to Arbiters to try to play the map control into the mid game and take that economic lead. Um, and I, I worry about this on Andromeda just because there is... Because you know there's going to be three bases on the opposite side for Terran. He's going to have a lot of comsat to work with. Uh, and as a result, I don't. I, I guess there's a lot of room to flank, though, at the same time. I almost feel that more troops would be a little bit better than than the detection, because uh, you can kind of crush down multiple locations. Even speed zealots a little bit earlier might be worthwhile. It looks like we are going to see a switch. So right now, I feel like the advantage is going to go back into the opposite team, because great going on the keyboard. Great is now the Zerg player, and we have Reach, who's very accustomed to playing Protoss. He's going to be very comfortable. <laughs> in this matchup and going up against kind of the, the young buck newcomer here, uh, Zurich, who, who performed excellently during Pro League last year, has been performing excellently overall. And a lot of siege tanks being pumped. Looks like two machine, uh, two machine shops up off two factories. Might even be gunning for it already. And let's see if he did in fact... Okay, I think he got a comp set off on that Arbiter tech. He's already getting the science facility out. Already going to have science vessels to counter that Arbiter when it comes out in the field. Also getting it for that weapon upgrade. That'll also... Uh, yeah, that's going to put him in a great position. There's that starship... <coughs> starship. There's the uh, starport 
pylon sealing those dragoons in just to provide a little bit of that buffer against the vultures now getting uh, the gateways and a forge up a lot of dragoons on the front